You are listening to a sermon from Village Baptist Church in Petaluma. For more sermons like this one, please visit our website at villagebaptisthome.org. Our mission is to win people to Christ and develop them into active disciples. We pray this sermon is a blessing to you. Now let's hear today's message. Hello, Village. I would like to wish everybody Happy Easter. Uh, it's so strange because this is the first time in the past 40 years that I've had to uh, preach Easter without anybody in front of me. And uh, not being able to hug anybody, not being able to uh, wish everybody personally uh, Happy Easter. It's really, really very painful. But we give God the praise. We give God thanks for all that he does for us. I give God thanks that we are all well and uh, we are uh, still connecting. We have prayer together. We've had some uh, conversations, some meetings together via Zoom. And uh, so in a sense, we are apart, but we're still together. So I give God thanks for that. I thank God for you. I thank God for what is happening right now. Because the Bible says, in all things, we should give thanks. We give thanks to God Almighty. I also wanted to update you to let you know that for the coronavirus uh, mission given uh, that we're trying to give out, uh, we collected a little over 1,300 from our members. So that is already added to the 5,000 uh, designated by the Board of Elders, and uh, we have already given $1,000 to the Phoenix Project in Marin City. Uh, and this is to help people, and Felicia Gaston is in charge of that, and we are still cooperating and still trying to reach out to people in Marin City. Uh, so your giving uh, is helping people uh, in Marin City, and the rest of the money, we're going to do something also local. Even though we're sending the bulk of that money to the Southern Baptist Convention through the California Baptist Association, uh, Baptist Convention Association, but we want to do something. We want to do something in the world to help reach out to people who are in need. So I want to lead you again in prayer today so we can ask God Almighty to shower us with blessings from on high. Let us pray. Our Father, we thank you one more time. We thank you for this special day that is Easter Sunday, a day that you demonstrated your resurrection power. We ask, so Lord, for that resurrection power this morning. We pray for our community, we pray for our church, we pray for our members, we pray for our neighbors, we pray for our city, we pray for our nation, we pray for our president, we pray for our senators, for our congressmen, we pray, oh Lord, you will endow them with wisdom from on high to be able to deal with this virus and to be able to minister to people, not only here in the United States, but everywhere in the world where people are in pain and suffering, we ask for your mighty power. We ask for your resurrection power. We ask, O oh Lord, that you will bless each one of us in the mighty name of our resurrected Christ. We pray, we thank you, we adore you, we magnify you, we give glory to you in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. I'm going to ask you to please uh, follow me as I read from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And I'm going to read a few uh, verses from there. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Now, brothers, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received and on which you have taken your stand. By this gospel, you are saved if you hold firmly 
to the word I preached to you. Otherwise, you have believed in vain. For what I received, I passed on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures, and that he appeared to Peter and then to the twelve. After that, he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers at the same time, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, and last of all, he appeared also to me as to one abnormally born. For I am the least of the apostles and do not even deserve to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And by his grace to me was not without effect. No, I worked harder than all of them, yet not I, but the grace of God that was with me. Whether then it was I or they, this is what we preach, and this is what you believed. And I'm going to jump to verse 20. But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead also through a man. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ all will be made alive. I want to talk briefly on the hope of the resurrection. On Easter, Easter brings the hope of the resurrection. Easter brings hope to us. What does Easter mean to you? What does the resurrection mean to you? Is this just a day to celebrate family? Yes, family should be together and celebrate. Is this a day to meet friends and neighbors? Well, maybe not during the coronavirus uh, pandemic. But Easter, interestingly enough, many of our children will not get a chance to search for the Easter eggs uh, this time. Uh, but Easter is not about Easter eggs, and it's not about the Easter bunny. It's not about how well you're dressed. Easter brings to us four major points that I would like you to reason with me today. As we look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15, what is the message that I would like you on this Easter day, not only to hold for yourself, but to pass on to your friends and to your neighbors through email and posting it on email and letting everybody know that Easter brings us four great celebrations. Easter brings us Four great celebrations. The first one is that Easter is the celebration of the greatest victory in the world. Everybody loves victory. Dallas Cowboys are some of the greatest teams on earth to show us victories. Super Bowl after Super Bowl after Super Bowl. And I know some of you 49ers are uh, booing me right now. But the colors... The Dallas Cowboys are a great team when it comes to winning, winning and winning, except for last year. Victory, God's victory is always victory over the things that we cannot conquer. First is the victory over sin. The scripture says that Christ died for us according to the gospel. He died in order that we may have victory over sin, victory over death, victory over separation, 
Victory over condemnation. The Bible says that now because of what Jesus did and because he died, he was buried and he rose again, we now have victory over sin. We have victory over condemnation. In fact, Paul said to the Romans that he is telling them, he is assuring them that we are now uh, conquerors in Christ. We have victory over condemnation. There is therefore no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. So we have victory over sin. We have victory over death. We have victory over separation. Not only is Easter the celebration of the greatest victory in the world, but Easter brings us the greatest relationship in the world. Now that Jesus died for us, and we put our faith in Jesus, we have the greatest relationship in the world. Now we have relationship with God. We are now brought together with God. We now have a vertical relationship with God. God is now our friend. God is now our father. God is now our protector. We now have relationship with God. There is therefore no more separation between us. The wall of separation has been broken down by the death of Christ, the burial of Christ, and the resurrection of Christ. We have the greatest victory. And that greatest victory leads us to the greatest relationship. Now that we have relationship with God, we now have relationship with our fellow men. It is the victory that Christ gave to us that allows us to have relationship even with people who don't like us. We are related to God. That's a vertical relationship. We now have a horizontal relationship with our fellow men. You know, that is how you know who a true Christian is. Many of us, we are heavenly good but earthly useless. If you have relationship with God, that relationship, the love of God is shed abroad in our heart. We can relate to the people who hate us. We can relate to people who abuse us. We can now relate to people who don't have anything with us. Because God, because of the resurrection, has brought hope into the world. And that hope is not limited to race. It's not limited to economic condition. It's not limited to social uh, relationship. This, this love that God has given to us through this relationship we have with him allows us to be able to relate to our fellow men. And that is really important. Easter is also a reason for the availability of the greatest hope in the world. The greatest hope in the world. What leads to suicide many times? Because people have no hope. What leads to people who are rich and are jumping down, jumping over into the water from the bridge, hopelessness. God died, he was buried, he rose again so you can have hope. If you are in Christ, absolutely nothing should be able to take you away from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. And I'm not saying this lightly. The hope of the believer is in the victory of Easter. Because Jesus overcame death, he gives us hope that we can deal with anything in our lives. The gospel finds its foundation in the resurrection. Christianity finds its foundation in the resurrection. Easter is really the hope of the world. The hope 
that the believer will rise again is also given to us in the resurrection, in the Easter story. Jesus, because he died, because he was buried, and because he rose again, gives us victory to know that one day we are going to die, we are going to be buried, but we are going to rise again, we're going to live forevermore, because Jesus gave us the greatest example of hope for the future. Death is not the end of the Christian. That is why I say to you that if you are born only once, physical birth, you are going to die twice. But if you are born twice, you're only going to die once. If you are born with the hope of the resurrection, death is not the end because you die once, you're going to rise again because you have been born again in the hope of the resurrection. That is very important. The last hope that Easter brings is the inauguration of the greatest day in the world. When Jesus died and was buried and rose again, he gave us victory. And that day that he rose again is the day that we celebrate. We worship on Sunday because of Easter. We gather together every Sunday to remember the first Easter. So Sunday is not just a day of rest. It's a day of celebration. We celebrate that Jesus died. He was buried, but he rose again. That is why, that is why, I don't agree with the Seventh-day Adventists who are worshiping on Saturday. Jesus did not rise on Saturday. He rose on Sunday. And Sunday is the day that we celebrate the greatest resurrection, the greatest hope in the world. Jesus, our Savior. So you see, it's not about Easter eggs. It's not about the Easter bunny. It's not about Easter candies. I love the candies. And it's not about going to the store and shopping till you drop. Though you can't do that no more. It is about the Easter story. It is about the greatest story. The story about victory story about relationship, story about the greatest hope, and story about the greatest day. Let us celebrate it together. Let us do it. Every Sunday you remember that Easter is Sunday. Every Sunday is Easter. Because every Sunday is the celebration of the greatest man, with the greatest message, with the greatest hope, and with the greatest day inaugurated. Happy Easter, everybody. Thank you for listening. If you would love to hear more sermons like this one or find out more about our church, please visit us at villagebaptisthome.org. Until next time, take care and God bless.